Hi guys, welcome back to this video tutorials about Pega PRCP version 8.5. So today we're going to review some rules, some visibility conditions, when rules, and different layouts that we can apply in a section rule. So please subscribe and support these video tutorials in order to keep uh, making videos and keep like building this application from scratch. So here in the section, I will start to uh, manage the, the view in order to have a more aesthetic form. Uh, so right now we're going to select the layout format. Uh, we can, for this a scenario, will will better if we use an inline, an inline uh, grid double, right? Because we'll have multiple um, fields that we want to, um, show up on this layout so the next one is well so, so once that the system finds the customer we want to know all the information about it so we can um use text input in order to show for example the address So we're going to create this property because we haven't created yet. So there we go. We'll be a text input. So like yes. We're going to close it up. Go back to the section. And here we're going to place a visibility condition. We have um, two ways to set up a condition for visibility for fields. One of them is this one that is the expression that you can use uh, an expression builder a mini expression builder that we have over here so here you can say like the property uh, customer must be different than blank so as you notice the the pegout already built our expression uh, we can use different uh, type of expression for example we can use the same that we use for programming, like equal, equal to say that is equal, this value is equal to that value. We can use um, equal and greater than, uh, incre equal minor or equal than. Uh, we can use as well a major and minor than the value, right? For example, if we have um, numbers that we're going to evaluate. So here, this is the easy way to set up a condition, but if you want to build something more complex, I would recommend to, in for maintenance, it will be better that if you have a when rule. For example, on the when rule, we have to set up a um, descriptive name for this when rule. In this case, I'll, um, is when customer, if customer is empty, we're going to select that. Great. So we create the when rule. And this is how a when rule looks like. So we can use like some basic condition as we want on the expression builder. Uh, we only have to wait a little bit to load. So as I explained to you, um, so we have the one rule here. Um, this, uh, we can evaluate different things. For example, we have the first value in relation of the second value, date time is in the past, assign operator is on my staff. We have a lot of expression that we can build for or when condition according to the necessities that we want, that we have, right? So for example, the the most common use is this one the first value uh, relation with the second value we can call another when rule here with this uh, function over here so as well we can 
uh, evaluate date times properties. For example, this one. Um, we have we can build expressions, and this is a cool thing because with the um, if we want to build an expression, it's not like the one that we see before that we saw before. So this one is have more complex functions. For example, here we have a bunch of them. More of the uh, all of them were built in in Java. So some of the most uh, common uses uh, have a function. We can find it here, right? So that that is a really cool thing that Pega has. There is a kind of flexible in that sense. So for this, we only near the first value relation to the second value. So in this case, we're going to evaluate the property um, customer. And we don't want that customer is empty. Here on the logic screen, you can build a lot of stuff as well. For example, we can use um, and or and if you just imagine that we have a second condition that we label with number two so we can use that that means that the first condition and the second condition must uh be re must return tr true in order to the validate works then we have or or we can express it with the bars sorry oh where are the bars Sorry, we can express it with the bars. We can express it with the bars that means or. Oh, we can use it with the simple letter, right? As well, we can uh, say uh, make the negative of the expression using the um, exclamation mark. For example, in this case, it will return false when the customer is M. It will return false when customer is. It's the opposite, right? So for this, we only need that. And as a best practice, I recommend always to build your when condition in order to use expressions. The expression sometimes fails, especially when you're not check in the rule that we're using, right? So here we're going to, I don't know why this didn't save it. We're going to select the in, inline grid double again. Or you know what? We're going to use inline. Just that. So here we only need to put a text input. That will be the net, next field that we want to fill out with the information of the customer. So now I'm already filled up all the fields that we're missing. Uh, I just select a couple of them from the data type because I, I don't want to um, have all saturated here. Then we're going to manage this to have a better form. So right now we, we use a couple of um, properties from the data type. So the one that I did is, the, the things what I did is like actually in order to avoid to uh, call all the properties from the data type each time that we look for a customer. Uh, the thing that I did is like, we use the first one, the first name to search. So then we set the uh, primary address with the property that we have in our case, the email with the uh, property that we have in a case and with the phone number and the phone number that we have in our case so in that way is when we're looking for a customer all these properties will be filled out without making any uh requests to the data type so extra requests right so in order to test it we're going to click create i'm sorry i just forgot to use the validation and then the other fields. So we're going to use it right now. There we go. So we're going to run the application one more time. 
and you notice that if we don't have any customers selected so basically it's not showing up the the fields that we have on the on this section because of a visibility condition so for example if i pick up a customer it will fill out automatically all the information about the customer on the fields that we need so that's all for today guys so i hope you like it i uh, will continue reviewing this in the next videos please subscribe in and in order to keep posted of this so we will continue uh, the, the main idea of this is to create a sales application so we're going to review a lot of stuff um, between that process and you will learn a lot from pega and you will see that it's a really great tool um, and, a, and and it will be a plus for your resume i will um share some links on the description of this video where you will find all the information that we're looking up today you can find it there for each rule that we modify you can look in detail on what is it looks about and all the configuration possible for the the rules so that's all for today guys uh thank you so much for watching see ya